Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now back in October 2019, I went to Bisley in the UK not only to shoot the historic service rifle match, which you've already seen, but also the more modern focused civilian service rifle match. Now this discipline was started about 20 years ago and it, uh, it started off simply as civilian shooting alongside the Army's inter-unit competition program at the Imperial meeting. It was pushed forward by a gentleman called Mark Bradley, uh, who unfortunately recently died. And this was the first match that we'd had civilian service rifle after his death, um, and in fact the match after, in November, his ashes were scattered over Century Range by cannon, which was incredibly appropriate, and uh, unfortunately I couldn't be there in November as well to take part in that ceremony, but I hear it was, uh, it was quite moving. Now, anyway, this is a league match, so there's no prize giving at the end of it, and we had three individual matches and a stint in the butts that made it up and uh, what I'm going to do is go through the matches in the order I shot them. I'm going to cut the shooting footage down quite a lot because it was a big match, 142 rounds including sighters. There were 144 competitors, it was oversubscribed, there was a waiting list and well it's one of the most uh, exciting disciplines that you can shoot on a very very formal range setup where you've got to have lots of people shooting alongside each other and still be able to, to move down range for, for various rundowns which you'll see. Um, anyone who wants to watch the full shooting footage, I'll put, I'll put that up separately, links in the corner in the description below at the appropriate places. So I decided that because I'd shot my number four the day before, I was going to shoot the Tika T3X Arctic to see how it performs and uh, slightly appropriate because the Canadian Rangers also shoot vaguely similar um, skilled arms programs alongside the, the regular army and the militia in, uh, in Canada and I thought I'd uh, see how it went. So um, basically, civilian service rifle is shot in uh, four different categories. You've got historic Enfield, which is um, SMLEs and number fours and number fives. You've got any irons, things like this, um, straight pull AR-15s as well with iron sights. The biggest dominant category is service optic, which is uh, limited to four and a half power optics. Uh, four and a half pound trigger pull. In fact, this is four and a half pound trigger pull as well. Luckily, this is uh, adjustable enough. I could actually wind the trigger pull up to the required four and a half pounds here. Um, service optic is basically dominated by AR-15s. You can mag rest. Um, no, no bipods or uh, or mono, front monopods or anything. And then finally, there's practical optic, which is uh, rather more freeform, one and a half kilo trigger, and it's dominated by sort of sniper type rifles or longer AR-15s with with bipods. Straight pulls, of course, because semi-auto centerfire rifles are unfortunately illegal in the UK. So, because I can't keep all of this in my head, I will just swap the rifle for the computer. So we'll start off with the urban match. Now this is a, a 40 round course of fire in four different stages from 100 to 25 yards. Normally it would have been done on turning targets and you shoot from left to right each stage on a different target. But the evening before, there had been a deluge of biblical proportions which had screwed the electronics. So we were unfortunately doing everything on the whistle, which is uh, suboptimal, but there you go. So then we start off with double snaps at 100 yards around cover. Um, nothing I've been able to practice, so this is a bit of a learning experience for me. Um, you've got one-to-one -one supervision always. One competitor supervises another, check safety, etc. And as I said, I won't bore you with all the shooting footage here if you want to see it. Links in the, up in the uh, corner and in the description below. So, once you're done with this, you make safe. It's the, uh, the British Army terminology for it, which means that you show clear to your, uh, to your safety supervisor. Once he's verified clear, you close the bolt and then you apply a new magazine. Uh, this is shot straight through. They don't call the course of fire at, it, at each time. It's just done in reaction to the, normally the target's moving, but here the whistle. So. Uh, from there we advance to 75 yards and we shoot kneeling or squatting around cover, supported or unsupported, and uh, sort of reverse kneeling seems to be the way to go for this. And you've got uh, two 15 second exposures to fire 10 rounds, which is uh, what, five rounds per, per exposure. It's not quite as quick as I thought it was going to be. I was a bit worried, um, so I went a bit quick. So. Anyway, this is a shot on the second target of the four. Then we make safe again, we advance to stage three, snap shooting at 50 yards, and standing, kneeling or squatting. 
uh, on a much, much smaller figure 14 window target and 10 shots to count and uh, five exposures of six seconds. So double snap. So I ended up massively underestimating the time available, went far too fast and uh, got flustered, uh, made several errors. Errors come in three, then three. So after having made safe again, we then go forward to stage four, close quarter snap, another small target again, figure 14 window, and uh, we end up with three exposures of seven seconds, so you're gonna fire three shots at uh, two of them and uh, four shots at one of them. And beforehand, I was a bit worried about this, particularly as the Tika's bolt actually in use is not as slick as a number fours. And uh, trying to keep it on the aim, if you pull it ever so slightly off axis, it binds a bit. Much worse than a, than a number four. And uh, so I was a bit worried, but that was actually, that was actually fine. And uh, scores wise, I ended up with 34 at 100, 31 at 75, 38 at 50, 44 at 25 for a total score of 147, which came second in that match. Uh, the winner was 163. And uh, just for reference, and I'll do this all the way through, the highest Enfield score was 145. So uh, the Tika did the business for me. Interestingly, for those who care, I shot 175 with the sight set at 100, and then the other two with the bigger zero aperture. So after that, I had a rather long stint in the butts marking targets. and then went on to the short range rural match where I got my only two sighters of the day. So stage one is a uh, rapid at 300, two sighting shots and 10 shots in one exposure of 60 seconds. Now the targets here are much, much smaller than those used for historic service rifle because the vast majority of people are shooting the scopes. So their bias and the scoring rings are biased towards using a scope. So we're shooting at a figure 12 target at 300 yards, which is extremely small. And this is a point where setting the sights to 400 yards or meters and taking a six o'clock hold. So balancing the figure 12 on top of it is a real advantage because honestly, you focus on that front sight, you've got a, uh, a sand and black colored camouflage target on sand, uh, as soon as you try to cut that in half, it just, it just disappears. So the difficulty of that tiny difficult to see target really showed there, and uh, I scored two fives, three fours, and the rest misses for a total of 22, which was in fact the worst score in any irons there, but uh, never mind. On we went. Stage two is a rundown. Now, because it had been torrentially raining the evening before, um, there was a lot of standing water on the range, so we didn't do the full rundown. It was done at the walk, no time pressure, because we didn't want people getting bogged down and falling over and stabbing the ground with their rifles and having all sorts of difficulties. So anyway, how this one goes is a bit more complicated. So it's 300 yards prone, 200 yards sitting, kneeling or squatting and 100 yards standing. You start by adopting the prone position and firing two rounds in 15 seconds. So you then make safe, advance to 200 yards, 
Adopt the sitting, kneeling or squatting position and make ready. And then there'll be two six seconds exposures and you fire two rounds per exposure. and then make safe again, remain in position. And then afterwards you advance to the 100 yard firing point, adopt the standing position, and then fire two rounds per exposure. Now, I uh, probably should have mentioned this already. You probably noticed that I'm using the sling wherever it makes sense. Um, I am not a sling absolutist like some people. Um, I use it only when it makes sense. And to me, standing, it doesn't make any sense, particularly in this kind of shooting. Next up, stage three, standing at 100 yards. Uh, five double exposures of three seconds with two seconds between exposures and you shoot the first shot standing and the second shot kneeling or squatting, and I kneel. And for me, it doesn't make sense to use the sling here. It's just gonna be more pain than it's worth because it really doesn't do anything for me standing. It does kneeling, but on three second exposures with movement between them, it doesn't really make sense. Now this was on the really tiny figure 12C target and uh, I'm quite pleased with how this went. This went uh, three bulls and five fours, which means two misses, 35, which was the highest of anyone shooting iron sights. So I'm pleased with that. Next up is stage four, sitting, kneeling or squatting at 200 yards, back on the slightly bigger figure 12 target. Two exposures of 20 seconds with an interval of eight seconds and you start in the standing alert position and then when the target appears, you adopt the sitting, kneeling or squatting and engage each exposure with five rounds. Don't really like kneeling. <laughs> Let's just say that. Don't get a chance to practice it really. But uh, I ended up with uh, one in the five and four in the four for a not very good 21 rounds, the lowest score in any irons. So stage five, prone at 300 yards again, and it snaps this time, and it's 10 exposures. The target can come up middle, left, or right, which always makes life fun with your natural alignment. Um, and they are three second snaps. Now, I was going far too fast, because my timing is set up for ISSF dueling with a pistol, where you get three seconds from the time it starts to turn. Here, the three seconds are more generous than from when the target's up. So uh, I'm rushing. Where we ended up here with three fives and two fours, and the rest misses for a mere 23. Gave me 136 overall. That was not my best match of the day, shall we say. I came fourth out of five, uh, but still was 10 points ahead of the, the best Enfield shooter, which was Gaz, by the way. So then we moved on to the amended Whitehead match, which is uh, five stages again, 50 rounds, no sighters, and it shot straight through. You don't get to see your spotting discs, you just get your scores at the end, um, and it's fairly intense as a result. Um, again, we didn't do the full rundowns because of the, of, of the, the, the wet conditions on the range. But, um, it's still fairly intense, and you've got to keep it in your You've got to keep everything in your head because they don't call the course of fire. They just say what stage it is and go. So uh, your safety supervisor can help you or you can keep notes with you. Now stage one is a rapid and would normally have started 25 meters behind, but we didn't. You get two 15 second exposures, um, fire five rounds per exposure. The light's bad. So once you've done that, you make the rifle ready again, and then uh, stage two, officially it's called deliberate, but actually it's a snap. Figure 12 target, three different positions again on the frontage. Yeah. 
and then you make safe and remain in the, pro in the prone position. Normally we'd then run forward to 200 with the rifle at the trail, but uh, we just walked and jogged the last little bit. This is uh, 10 exposures of 4 seconds, and uh, you start in the standing alert position, so that's the rifle down at 45 degrees, and then drop to kneeling, squatting, or you can remain standing to, uh, to fire one shot per exposure. So then for stage four, opportunity, we stayed at 200 yards and it's sitting, compulsorily sitting. And again, something I've not practiced, don't have the opportunity to practice, not good at. Um, five exposures of six seconds, double snaps, so two shots per exposure. So finally, stage five, you advance to 100 yards and shoot double snaps on a tiny figure 12 C target, six second exposures. The ready position is standing alert again, and then uh, you fire your two shots and return to standing alert, whether you've shot standing, kneeling, or squatting, it's uh, entirely up to you. Then at the end, the scores are signaled, and uh, because they use the same targets for various practices, all we can say is that uh, for practices one and two at 300, I scored seven fives, seven fours, the rest misses, 63 points. At 200, I scored three fives and seven fours, which uh, <laughs> there's quite a lot of misses in there, 43 points. And at 100, four fives and five fours for a total of 40, which is actually quite Good. Total 146, which put me second in my category, and uh, the highest Enfield score was uh, 119 for comparison. Well, that was brilliant fun. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Well worth the trip across the continent carrying rifles and dealing with all the paperwork and customs and all that. But uh, anyway, if you'll permit me, I would just like to geek out briefly on uh, using the Tika under these conditions. Um, it's an awful lot of shooting, 140, uh, 142 rounds. That rubber butt pad was very, very worthwhile. Stopped the rifle slipping up and down in, uh, in my shoulder a lot. Um, it is not as slick as a number four, but the sights are good. This one has the, uh, the updated sights with the, uh, the finer square post. I'd actually zeroed it at Brunig Indoor at 300 meters, and I didn't make any adjustments to it other than turning the drum to set the range. And, uh, for those who've been recommending that I put some, some sights on that don't have the drum adjustment, you'll see why, for me, that's not a nice to have, that's an absolute must, or at least some form of countable click adjustment. Um, as I said earlier, at 300, I had to take a six o'clock hold. There was just no question. I planned to anyway. You've seen other videos where I've uh, discussed why I think that's a good idea. Absolutely essential on that, on that small target. Um, in the CSR handbook, you can see the dimensions of the target, but it's only about that. It's not very big at all. Um, at 200, I uh, well, did the Swiss thing of aiming, uh, aiming point of aim, point of impact, but I found the pattern on the target was causing me to, to draw my front sight down a bit. So at, at a certain point, I actually uh, flicked up to 300 so I could hold down a bit. And a similar thing happened to me at 100 on the, on the tiny figure 12C target. Um, I found that, that, that the pattern was drawing my front sight down psychologically, so again, flicked it to 200, gives me about three inches extra elevation. But uh, I mean, compared to the, uh, the bigger targets the day before with the number four, I was not making as many hits or as good hits. The short sight radius on this, yeah, you, you, you notice the difference. The number four has a, a, a good chunk more sight radius. Um, and working the bolt, I mean, none of this is super fast, so you don't really need to, to do sort of man minute style, really not, not moving your head. And in fact, to rest my eyes, and particularly at the end of the day when the, the light was getting low, I was looking over the sights to see the target come up, 
and then coming down, taking the aim, taking aim at it, and uh, and shooting. And in fact, there were a couple of iron sight guys who thought they saw a target when they didn't, and actually fired when there was no target present. Because behind where the targets are, uh, with the with the sand backstop, you've got a shadowy sort of hollow in the backstop. And uh, if your eyesight is not quite on point, you could think you've seen a target, particularly under stress, and uh, a couple of shots were loose as a result of that. Now you can also see from some of the head cam footage that the fore end is quite skinny. When I've got long arms I hold, tend to hold out. Fore end is very skinny here. Um, you must not touch the barrel. Firstly it gets very hot and on the urban match it gets very hot very quickly. Um, you, you'll burn your fingers. Um, also you'll affect the barrel harmonics, throw shots off, so you must keep your fingers off. So I do bemoan the lack of a hand guard on it, but uh, we shall see uh, fomenting a little uh, ersatz handguard project in my head on this so we'll see if we uh, can do anything with that so anyway thank you so much to the nra for letting me film particularly for peter cottrell who is uh, director of shooting also not only gave me permission to film but gave me some helpful tips for instance going uh, reverse kneeling against the barricade on the urban match uh, thank you so much top chap, uh, acted as a chief range officer. It's excellent to have that kind of support for a, for a discipline like this at the NRA these days. Um, thank you very much to Kevin for holding a camera all day. Thank you also to the people who acted as my safety supervisors and uh, just generally people around who tolerated having a camera waved around the place and, uh, and me doing all that. Thank you so much. It's brilliant and I hope to come again uh, sometime next year, 2020. So. Thank you also to patrons who uh, made this possible. If you haven't become a patron yet, please consider doing so. Link up in the corner and uh, in the description and uh, see you again sometime. Bye.